UW veterinarian Sandy Sawchuk is back with us tonight. Welcome back. Nice to be here. We're taking your calls at 270-9933. We got lots of calls as usual, so let's get right to them. We'll start with Penny from Sun Prairie. Hi, Penny. Hi. Hi, what's your question? Um, I've been hearing that some people feel that we over-vaccinate our dogs mm -hmm. and may want to consider having a tighter Mm -hmm. done mm -hmm. and I'm wondering what your thoughts are on that. That's a very good question. First of all, anybody that has access to the internet, I strongly recommend if you're a pet owner to go, especially for dogs, to the American Animal Hospital Association's website. They have vaccine guidelines printed there and then for cats to the American Association of Feline Practitioners website, they have cat vaccine guidelines there. I, vaccines are very important to prevent not only your pet from getting sick, but in some cases us, in the case of rabies vaccine. And so I think it's important to vaccinate your pet, but I do believe, as you're saying, that it may be overdone. And I think that looking at the intervals between vaccines, we've gone from doing everything every year to now stretching vaccines to every three years. And there may be even in the near future recommendations to go a little bit longer as research comes in. But right now we're saying, you know, do it every three years, treat every pet as an individual, and look at their lifestyle to determine what they need to keep themselves healthy. Because there are still some diseases that require annual vaccines. And without having that, then it may be putting them at risk. So, and you know, if in the case of getting titers done, which is a measure of the body's immune response to the vaccines that were previously given, that can be done. But in like some cases like rabies vaccine, it runs up almost $100 to have a titer done versus what you pay for the vaccine. So you're looking at about five times the amount. And you know, is it better to vaccinate or just to get a blood sample? What Sometimes the, the pocketbook. What was the website you mentioned again? The American Animal Hospital Association okay. and American Association of Feline Practitioners. Great. Okay. Okay, that's great. That's good. Really good advice. Let's go to Ginny in Verona. Hi, Ginny. What's your question? Uh, I have a 16 and a half year old Walker Coonhound, oh, wow. and he's in good health. But when I rescued him about four and a half years ago, he's always had spinal issues. Mm -hmm. He was diagnosed through X-rays by my vet as having spinal degeneration. Okay. One vet thinks it's in the bones, uh -huh. in the spine. The other one thinks it's in the nerves. He is getting weaker and walking slower, but I walk him every day. Uh, he does walk at least a mile a day. Good. He gets spinal manipulation. He gets acupuncture and massage. Is there anything else I can help him with? Wow, you are 16. doing everything. Wow. This is like a very, very senior dog for this size dog. And what a great owner you are to be doing all these things. Some other things that you may want to be looking at is making sure that his weight is under control. If they're not getting that much exercise, making sure that you're keeping his weight down so that he doesn't get overweight and have to carry all that weight. You may also want to be looking at physical therapy. And this would be using a trained animal physical therapist that could show you some exercises that would help maintain some of that muscle strength that he's got um, in his back and his legs to be able to support himself. And then maybe that even turn you on to things like underwater treadmills and things that will help support him and yet still give him some exercise. So boy, I, you can't ask yeah. for a better owner that's doing everything she can for this, this truly senior dog. Congratulations on the work. And we're going to take a quick break. If you're on the line, stay there. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everybody. Back to our calls for Sandy Sawchuck and Meg from Dodgeville. You're next. Hi there. Hi. I have a question. We have a five-year-old male boxer, and uh, he's excessively shedding. And we were wondering if this is normal. From things we've read, um, boxers are supposed to be a low-shedding dog. Oh, I would disagree with that. Okay. <laughs> I have friends that have a boxer. Yeah. I still have hair on me. Right, right. They, they, even short-haired dogs will shed. Labrador retrievers, my bulldogs, you can't believe the dust bunnies, that, you know, even in a day or two that build up. But one of the things that I get concerned about with excessive shedding is, is there a medical reason for it? And sometimes we will see issues with the thyroid gland, very common in boxers, that can cause them to lose an excessive amount of hair. So I would recommend that you get him in to be looked at. And if, his, if some of his symptoms meet that criteria for diagnosing thyroid issues, getting a thyroid level done is a fairly inexpensive test. It's just a little blood test that they can draw when they're at the clinic. 
then we'd also be looking at nutrition to see, is he on a good plane of nutrition? Is he on a diet that has balanced fatty acids and so on to make sure that we're providing his coat with everything it needs to stay healthy? And then it's just a matter of the right grooming <laughs> tools and a good vacuum. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Angie from Madison, you're next. Hi, Angie. Angie, what's your question? My question is, I have six French Bulldogs, which are currently my blanket at the moment. <laughs> um, <laughs> they are always doing that. I have two, dad and daughter, who have anal gland issues. I'm sorry about the subject. Yep, that's all right. Um, and they have had it, um, gosh, Moscow's had it, I think, almost two times in one year, and Ripley has had it almost three times in a year. Yeah. And our vet's recommending possibly having them surgically removed. Right, right. And, you know, anal gland issues are one of those things that all dogs have anal glands, but sometimes just anatomically, dogs are built a little bit differently, and so they may not express normally when the dog has a bowel movement. And so it, sometimes we, it's up to us to get them in frequently to keep them empty. Sometimes it's a matter of a diet change to a, a higher fiber diet that's going to produce larger stools, more of them. And if not, if you're seeing infections, especially if it's happening more than once in a year, Getting them removed, yes, it's yeah. a fairly safe surgery. It does require anesthesia, but I, I would be recommending that as well. Yeah, I love French bulldogs. Oh, they're, they're cute, yeah. <laughs> it wouldn't be a show without an anal gland. I know, <laughs> That's right. we have to, or a stool, yeah. Hey, thanks, Andy. <laughs> thanks, Andy, good to see you. Thanks for your calls, everybody. We'll see you next month, and we'll be right back. <laughs>